Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta Texas in San Antonio, Texas was the second ever wooden coaster to be converted into a hybrid coaster back in 2013. Before that, it was called the Rattler. The original Rattler opened in 1992 and was manufactured by the Roller Coaster Corporation of America, or RCCA, who at the time had never actually made a roller coaster. They did end up making five coasters total, the Rattler being their first, and all of them are known for being some of the roughest and worst roller coasters ever built. The Rattler opened as the tallest and fastest wooden coaster in the world, with a massive layout that hops on and off of the park's quarry wall. Over the years, the coaster underwent various changes to its layout in an effort to reduce the roughness and the strain on the wooden structure, and it ended up closing on August 4th, 2012, which on the day of recording the script is exactly 10 years ago. The park then hired Rocky Mountain Construction to come in and give it the iron horse treatment, removing all of the wooden track and replacing it with smooth steel track. RMC would also make modifications to the layout, adding in one inversion, removing the two helices, and making the first drop a lot steeper. Over the past decade, RMC has been giving plenty of wooden coasters this treatment, and their design style has changed quite a lot. So today, I'm going to be looking at what Iron Rattler could look like if it was designed in 2022. First, let's look at the original Rattler and see what we're working with. The layout starts with a simple turn that leads into this massive lift hill. The chain lift dumps the train right into this frightening first drop, which drops down right beside the quarry wall, before hopping back on with this massive first turnaround. The turnaround drops the train back off of the quarry wall before a long stretch of track that once again brings the train on top of the quarry wall. It then crawls through this painfully slow and, over time, painfully rough helix that wraps around three whole times as the train's just moving at a snail's pace. After traversing the helix for literally a whole minute, the train finds its way to the mid-course brake run before a turning drop off of the wall. This leads into a tunnel that goes through the wall, back out again through another helix, and into the brakes. The pre-lift and lift hill follow pretty much the same path as the Rattler, with a turn and then an entrance into the lift hill. RMC does have some pre-lift sections that are a bit crazier, like Twisted Colossus or Untamed, but we can see some very basic pre-lift sections on recent coasters like Zadra and Iron Gwazi. For the lift hill, there are some RMCs that significantly increase the angle at which the lift hill ascends, like when converting Mean Streak to Steel Vengeance. When they converted Rattler to Iron Rattler, I'm not sure that the lift hill was changed at all. I changed it so the lift hill was about 42 to 43 degrees. This allows the track to reach a height over 200 feet, 202.3 to be exact. Because of this, the train will have much more speed on that notoriously slow quarry wall section on the real-life Iron Rattler. The first drop was in inspired by the real Iron Rattler, with an unbanked turn as the train descends the crest of the drop, and then a couple of back and forth transitions as the track follows the path along the quarry wall from the original Rattler. Since the drop on Iron Rattler is regarded as one of, if not the best drop on an RMC hybrid coaster, I tried to mimic the shaping as well as I could, just while making the drop about 20 feet taller. Even front row riders will get borderline ejector airtime on this drop, receiving negative 0.5 Gs of airtime and 0.3 Gs of lateral force due to the twist, but back row riders are viciously whipped down the drop, experiencing a strong negative 0.9 Gs of ejector airtime and 0.6 Gs of laterals. The train drops into this tunnel, which in real life is more of a cover over the track, but whatever, it's close enough. While in this tunnel, the train snakes back and forth a little, aligning itself with the quarry wall and following the path that the original Rattler left behind. Riders near the front of the train will experience a maximum of 3.5 Gs, while while the riders near the back will experience up to 3.7, which is the strongest on the ride. At this point in the ride, the original Rattler jumps onto the quarry wall and heads through this absolutely massive turnaround, which is replaced by three separate elements on the real-life Iron Rattler. There is an airtime-filled step up onto the quarry wall, followed by an overbanked turn, and then another steeply banked turn leading the train back down to ground level. I went into this design planning on replacing this section with more modern versions of those elements, a stronger step up, and then maybe a wave turn replacing the first overbank, and some sort of airtime filled drop
drop back off of the wall. But it turned out that there was not nearly as much room to fit those elements in as I had originally thought. Then I remembered I'm not just redesigning Iron Rattler's layout element by element, I'm taking the structure of the original Rattler and designing an RMC layout of that. So now I realized I can use this entire massive turnaround section instead of just redoing those small overbank turns. So here's what I did. I say that like I'm about to do something groundbreaking, but the first part of this is literally the exact same as it is on the real life Iron Rattler. The train hops onto the quarry wall through this massive Hakuge-like step up, providing riders with negative 0.8 Gs of strong ejector airtime throughout the entire train. After the step up, the train turns slightly to the left and heads into a massive Iron Gwazi-like outer banked airtime hill, which drops the train all the way back down to ground level. Front row riders ascend this element pulling 0.9 Gs of lateral force on the whippy transition into banking outward at a 45 degree angle, whereas back row riders get 0.7 lateral Gs entering this element. The entire train receives negative 0.5 Gs of very strong and very sustained floater airtime, with either end of the train maxing out at negative 0.7 Gs. Front row riders hit negative 0.7 Gs on the ascent, and back row riders get it on the descent, where they also pull 0.9 lateral Gs on the transition exiting the outer bank. The train races through a low to the ground turn, which whips into the first inversion of the ride. This inversion takes the place of another massive ascent onto the quarry wall, this one leading into the Rattler's infamous triple helix, but we'll get to that later. I figured that this hill was so drawn out that I could possibly fit two inversions into its place. I was eyeing the double inverting stall featured on Untamed at Wallaby Holland as a possible candidate for this. It turned out that, once again, I had overestimated how much space the Rattler structure had given me. I could fit the first 0G roll quite easily, as that's the inversion that exists here on the real life Iron Rattler. But the second roll did not flow how I wanted to because of the limited space. I still wanted to have some unique twist to this element, no pun intended, so I decided to combine this element with something like Iron Gwazi's first wave turn. So the 0G roll would complete a 3 quarters rotation so that the element would end while the track is banked 90 degrees. Now I could add a little sideways airtime to the element before a fast direction change, kinda like the wave turn on Zadra, but without the first snap entering the element. So looking back on the full element, the train would twist through the first 0G roll portion until it hits 90 degrees. Then this part sustains negative 0.4 Gs of sideways airtime before back row riders receive up to negative 0.9 Gs of airtime on the intense transition exiting the element. This next section of the ride is where the real-life Iron Rattler loses most of its speed and crawls through the next few elements before that spectacular drop off of the wall. This part replaces the helix portion of the Rattler, but it took a little bit of a different approach because I had more speed to begin with. I actually had the track cut a little inside of the path of the helix because I wanted to have a second go-around to elongate the ride time, and this second lap would follow the path of the helix. So the first element here is a classic RMC wave turn. This sequence taking inspiration from Iron Gwazi's sequence of an outer banked wave turn shortly followed by a traditional wave turn. This wave turn is a little stronger than the one on Iron Gwazi, as this one provides riders throughout the train with negative 0.7 Gs of ejector airtime. This wave turn is followed up by a tight, low to the ground turn that leads into the ride's second and final inversion, a cutback. The turn leading into the element actually stretches outside of the footprint of the Rattler's helix to make room for the track leading into the drop off of the wall. This cutback gives all riders a perfect zero Gs as the track banks upside down and then back right side up again. The track aligns itself with the helix and heads into a twisted timbers inspired outer banked hill. The track whips to the left before quickly twisting back in the other direction, and the whole train experiences strong ejector airtime, maxing out at negative 1 Gs for front row riders and negative 1.1 Gs for those in the back. This transitions into a classic RMC bunny hill, providing ejector airtime to the whole train, with the front and back of the train reaching negative 0.8 Gs. The train flies over this hill before traversing this small overbank turn that aligns the track with the drop off of the wall. The original Rattler actually had a mid-course brake run in this spot, but both Iron Rattler and my concept have removed the brake run due to the ride's short length. The following drop off of the quarry wall is arguably the most iconic moment on the real-life Iron Rattler, as it is well known for being one of the best airtime moments on an RMC. But in my concept, the train approaches this element with significantly more speed than in the real-life Iron Rattler. So the train absolutely flies 
carries over this element, and even front row riders get strong ejector airtime, pulling negative 0.9 Gs, but back row riders get the strongest airtime moment on the ride, as they receive negative 1.2 Gs of airtime as they are yanked over the side of the quarry wall. This is the point in the original Rattler where the track heads into a tunnel through the side of the wall, before traversing one last helix before the brakes. Iron Rattler just heads right into the brakes after exiting the tunnel. I intended to do something similar to what Iron Rattler has, but it turned out that I had way too much speed to fit in an airtime pop leading into the brakes, so I went with an Iron Gwazi-like snap into the brakes and an aggressive deceleration. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out a similar video I did for the new Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.